Okay, I want to do this short video on how to use this virtual whiteboard called Jamboard to either make teaching videos or to work with small groups of students collaboratively and virtually in real time. We're going to do the video part first and then we'll talk about the collaborative part second. To do this, we're going to be using both a computer and a tablet or a phone of some sort. In my case, I'm going to be using an iPad, but you could do this with a phone as well, and we'll talk about how to do that a little bit later. So Jamboard you can get uh, either by going to jamboard.google.com or from your app grid, you can find that by looking for the J. If you don't have any jams yet, as it were, uh, you can just hit the plus to create one and what you'll find is a, a blank space. And I'm going to talk specifically here about using this in a math class where you're having to do a lot of writing of equations or things like that and where it's easier to be writing something. And that's really where I find the use for this. Now one thing that I think is really nice about Jamboard and is true of other apps like this, but specifically with Jamboard because it's a Google product, the nice thing is of course you can share this with your students and if you share it with them, you'll have the ac the ability to share them with uh, edit access or read-only access. And we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later. Um, a couple other points. I'm not going to give you really a lot of tips about how to use Jamboard itself. Uh, I will point out a few things. One thing I like is I can put a background on here. So I'm going to put a grid background and that will be important for another piece that I'll be showing you in a bit. Uh, you can add photos. You can actually easily copy and paste anything. So if I took an image, paste that in very readily and put that anywhere in my document, I can uh, make it bigger or smaller. I can rotate it. And one of the other nice features, if you've got something that you might want to repeat, you can just do a control, a control D and that will duplicate anything. So a couple of things to keep in mind. Also, if you're using this as a teaching tool, uh, there's a laser pointer so that uh, you can circle things and it disappears. And there's your import feature. You can add post-it notes. And I encourage you to try some of the other features that are on here. But for now, uh, I'm going to focus on just the writing here. Uh, oh, and one last thing you can do is you can add uh, more than one page here as, if you want. So if you wanted to do a series of notes on things with several pages, you could do that. Now, in a math class, you might want to do a teaching video on how to solve an equation, how do you do a particular concept, and there are lots of ways that you can do that. Um, you could certainly uh, use this app on a tablet, like an iPad, and that would work fine. You could use some of the screen recording features there, but one thing that I think is really important if you're writing stuff down is, is the ability to write really easily. Now, you certainly can't do that on a screen. Uh, if you don't have a touch screen. So you do, that's where the tablet comes in play. So you can write, whether you write with your finger or whether you write with a stylus, uh, that's also important. So that's why you, opening some on a computer is nice, but being able to open it on a tablet or a phone is, is much easier to do actually the writing. So I'm going to open this same file up on an iPad. So there it is there. And so you can see that I can actually write on the screen here and it shows up on my desktop screen. So it's communicating, even though I'm on different devices, back from one to the other. Now, one thing that I notice that when I'm writing here, if you don't have one of the newer styluses, if you're like me and you have just a standard stylus, or if you're writing with your finger, it's hard to write really nicely on the iPad. So one nice sort of pro tip that I have for you, let me actually erase this, is to zoom in, so I'm, I'm pinching zoom in here, and that way I can write on part of the screen, and it's a nice and big area to write on here, so I can write and not have to worry about how big or small it is, but on the main screen you can see that it's small enough that I can still fit a lot on the page. And you could do this just as easily on a phone. The screen is a lot smaller on a phone, but you can still do that pinch zoom and write with your finger or write with your uh, stylus, and it works out fine here 
because you're drawing on just a small area of the screen, yet you have that whole screen to show. So really what you could do here is you could do your entire teaching video recording your screen on your computer while doing this, and but writing the actual stuff on your tablet or on your phone so that it's a little bit easier to write. And you know you could be recording on the screen using Screencastify or your your whatever screen program that you have to use. So, and then at the end, the nice thing is that since you can share this out with your students, your students would have not only the video, but they would have the actual Jamboard file to look closely at and follow along as you're actually producing it. Now that's not particularly groundbreaking. I think what could be groundbreaking here is the collaborative side of this. The fact that I can open this up and share this with students and have them working on it at the same time. And for that, I'm going to actually imagine that you might be doing a synchronous session on some sort of video conference call. We're going to use Google Meet here, but it could be Zoom or anything else like that. So I'm going to open up Meet and say that you're starting a session with your class or with a few students. And you're sharing that with your students in whatever way you want. And the reason I'm suggesting this is because what I want to actually share on my screens, I want to share uh, the Jamboard as I'm working on it. And so what I want to do is I want to actually share my screen, share my Jamboard screen with my students. And to prepare that, I actually want to share it in a very specific way. I actually want to share just that Jamboard screen, not my entire computer screen. So I'm going to drag that out into its own window. I'm going to drag it from the tab bar into its own window. So I'm not going to present the entire screen. I'm going to pr present a window. And I'm going to choose my Jamboard screen. Now what I see is this on my screen. But what I want to see mainly is I want to keep track of the chat, what the students are saying. I don't have anything in my chat because I don't have any students here. But I want to be able to see what my students are saying in the chat. And what my students are seeing is this. They're seeing the Jamboard. So even though I might zoom in to do my writing, I'm on my screen, I'm seeing the large view so that I can uh, write relatively easily. And on their screen, what they're seeing is the smaller view uh, of the entire screen so that they see the entire note as it's happening. So basically, I'm logged in in my Jamboard on my computer. I have that in a new window. And I'm logged in in the Google Meet on my computer on its own window. And then on my iPad, I have just the Jamboard opened up and zoomed in to wherever I want to be writing. So this is a nice way to present a lesson to your students that in a way that you might do it in class where you're writing and talking and asking questions and asking them to answer questions and doing those things. But one of the nice added features that you can now use here is if you've already shared the presentation with your students, or even if you haven't, you can go back to your share settings in real time and give some students access to edit the Jamboard and they can work alongside you. So this is, I, I don't know if I would give everybody access in an entire class, that would be a little bit crazy. But if you were with online with just a, a one or two students, you could give them shared access and you could all be collaborating on the same question and asking them questions in real time, seeing how they respond and actually doing a, a head to head session with them. And just a reminder that the, the iPad or the whether you're doing this on an iPad or a phone or, or any other device, all that is for is to make it easy for you to write in a small space um, while your students see what's going on in the big Jamboard. And if you're doing a Google Meet uh, with your class anyways, you might as well hit record and they have a recording of what you're saying about the Jamboard and since you've shared the Jamboard with them, they've got the notes themselves so they can refer back to them as that recording is going on. So that's a way that you can use Jamboard to either create videos for your students that they can watch statically 
or a way that you can interact with your students live in a virtual setting where you can both be working on the same document in real time, just like you would on a regular whiteboard in your class.